Hey kids, this is Ivan again. How you doing? I'd like to try to tackle the kind of contentious topic of character mortality in D&D. Now, I'll be honest with you, I was a little bit taken aback after taking a break from RPGs for a while and coming back and playing D&D and looking on the web just how contentious this topic had actually become. Now, of course, everything is contentious on the internet, you know, in web forums, people argue about anything. But this one in particular seems to get people a little bit heated. Now, if you look back at the, the uh, three basic versions of the game, like Mulvey and Holmes and Menser, and in first edition, all these books gave examples of combat and of adventuring where low-level characters died, and this was just kind of an accepted part of the game. You understood that the potential for your character to die existed, and you could roll up a new one and keep playing. And, you know, so this is kind of how I've played over the years. Now, I understand that people talk a lot now about social contracts and the idea that you can discuss, you know, as players and with your DM, what kind of game do we want to play? Do we want to have a, a game where, you know, character mortality isn't an option or it's very limited or if I die, it's going to be in this spectacular, wonderful manner? And I'll be honest with you, if a group of players came to me and said this is what we want to do, I'd probably pass. And I'd probably pass on playing a game like that as well. Just because to me, it feels a little bit like cheating if there's not a, a real potential for your character to bite the dust. And, you know, you know, the rewards of the game are great, but I want the, the risks to kind of equal those. So I feel good about actually accomplishing something, you know, when my character makes it and goes up in levels and all that sort of stuff. Now, to me, like, death at lower level isn't a really a big deal, especially in older versions of D&D. You can roll up a new character in five or ten minutes and get back in the game. You know, at higher level... And by that time, things like resurrection and reincarnation and, and raise dead and all those spells are, are more or less available depending upon the campaign and the DM. And you can kind of go out and find ways to resurrect that character in many cases. You know, even in sometimes doing something really funny like, you know, a well-meaning druid, uh, you know, uh, it reincarnates your character and it turns out now you're this three-foot-tall badger that can cast spells and, and wield a dagger. And that's kind of funny. But, um, you know, sometimes you can even make a quest out of this and where the other characters go in, in quest for this guy that's going to resurrect Johnny and you know, maybe he gets to play a different character or one of the henchmen for that and that's kind of fun. But sometimes dead is dead and there's nothing you can do about it. Now people talk a lot about the investment that people have in their characters nowadays and you know say that it's, it's a greater investment than it once was and I don't buy this. You know, it, regardless of, you know, whether character gen took you five minutes or, you know, a day uh, in terms of, you know, the complexity of generating a character, after you played a character for two to five years, there's a pretty severe investment in that character, whether you're playing, you know, first edition or OD&D, or whether you're playing something like Pathfinder or fourth edition. And, you know, it's a bummer in either way. Nobody wants their character to die. And, you know, you have to, you know, make a new one. And it's a real bummer, especially when you've been playing this guy for years. Now you have to remember, you know, you know, this isn't a new concept. You know, back in the late seventies and early eighties, we had all that hubbub where, you know, people were claiming that character death promoted player suicide. And you know, so this isn't a new phenomenon now. You know, I don't think it does, but you know, you understand that you know character investment was already a concept way back, you know, in the in the late seventies. You know, before any of this this new kind of uh, idea about, you know, in, increased character investment uh, or investment in the characters kind of came up. Now, as far as, like, how to introduce a new character once your character has bit the dust, there's a lot of different ways to do that. A lot of times, you know, you can go back to the town and, you know, okay, well, here's this new guy you can go play. You know, you, you, know, you introduce the character that way. Or you can do the very cliche thing where he's a prisoner in the orc camp or in the dungeon, and that's how you find this new guy. And sometimes realism and, you know, uh, believability has to take a back seat to fun and just getting Johnny back in the game because he didn't come to your house to... Um, to sit out the rest of the game or just go home after five minutes, he wants to play. So you, you know, find a way to you know, get him back in the game as soon as possible. And the great thing about the older versions of the game is you can kind of roll up this guy in five or ten minutes. And yeah, you want to make a backstory and everything else and maybe you know, get some skills or whatever. But you can do that in the middle of the game or just do it after the game. And you can jump right back in. And that's why, one of the reasons I like the older versions is you can you know, go right back in. And it's not this big complicated thing to generate a new character. Um, in terms of like how to do that uh, level wise, you know, if the characters are all low level, then yeah, you just introduce a new first level character. You know, most low level parties are mixed because people died. Um, if the characters are higher level, there's a few things you can do. Uh, often you can you know, introduce a henchman, like somebody's, you know, either the character themselves had a henchman or somebody else is a henchman, and you can start playing that guy, and maybe he's a few levels or half the levels of everybody else, and he catches up. Uh, you could, if you really wanted to, introduce a new character that's the same level as everybody else. I particularly don't like that as a DM, and I really don't like it as a player, because once again, I feel like I'm cheating, and I'd rather, 
you know, kind of work my way up through the levels. You can also just introduce a brand new first level character. And a lot of people freak out about this and say, like, oh my god, how is he going to survive? And to be honest with you, if you play intelligently, you know, say you're, you're playing with some guys that are like seventh level, you can introduce a first level character, have them kind of hang out in the background, help out with stuff that normally like a retainer or henchman or hireling would do. And the great thing is he gets full XP and people can kind of like maybe lend him some money. They're his friends, they should be. Uh, and lend him some money for armor, maybe you know, throw him a magic weapon or whatever until he can kind of, you know, find some stuff on his own. And the great thing is he, because he's earning the same amount of XP as everybody else, by the time these other people go from 7th to 8th level, he's going to be about 6th or 7th level himself. Often you can level a guy, you know, once per adventure. It's not very realistic, but who cares? You're just trying to get back in the game. So that's pretty much, you know, my take on character mortality and, and you know, how to how to handle that sort of thing. You know, to me, it's not a big deal. It's a big bummer if a character dies, and I try to avoid killing characters for the most part as a DM. I'm not going to be super lenient, but, you know, if you're playing intelligently, you know, I'm going to give you the benefit of the doubt, and, but sometimes people die. Sometimes that's how the dice rolls go, and you just live with it. You make a new character, and, and you, you play on, and the game is fun. It's all about make pretend, you know, make believe and, and let's pretend, and, uh, you know, not so much about really getting so wrapped up in this character that your life is going to come to an end if they bite the dust.